Hey guys, my name is Pedron, and I'm a professional practice assistant professor in finance. I'm also a CFA charter holder. This is another episode of my crash course in machine learning concepts, Simply Explained. All right, part 15, lasso regression. This model is like the ridge regression, is a type of penalized regression models. But lasso regression is also used for feature selection. So let's talk about the details. If you've already watched part 13 and part 14, this slide should be quite familiar to you. But if this is the first time that you're seeing this, uh, here's a quick recap for you. So let's quickly talk about the regularization and penalized regression motivation, right? So why we need to do that. So uh, basically we do that to avoid overfitting. So here is your uh, complex model. And we know that if the model is complex, the bias is a small and the variance is very large, right? So we do regularization. We make the model less complex by adding a little bit of bias intentionally. If I go from here to here, as you can see, the bias is going to increase intention, you know, a little bit, but the variance is going to decrease a lot, right? So this is an amount of reduction in variance that we get. So overall, the combination of the two is going to be reduced. So the MSE, which is a combination of bias and variance, is going to get reduced. Right. So that's the motivation of the regularization and penalized regression in general. We want to go from an overfitted model to, a, let's say, a good balance of bias and, and variance. All right. So what is lasso regression? So lasso stands for least absolute shrinkage and selection operator. So it's also a shrinkage method like ridge regression. But on top of that, it is used for feature selection. So that's why we say and selection operator. So let's always use for feature selection as well. So the loss function is very similar to penalized regression in general. And the only difference between lasso and bridge regression is the functional form for the penalty term. So as you can see, instead of L2 norm, what are we using? You're using L1 norm, right? So L1 norm least absolute. So lasso regression is using L1 norm and it's with by using L1 later on in the very final slide we're going to see exactly why but by using L1 it is able to eliminate so this is a difference between lasso and uh, sorry here eliminate between lasso and ridge regression. Lasso eliminates the least important feature from the model and it automatically performs a type of feature selection. So this is a big advantage of lasso versus ridge regression because not only it's going to shrink some parameters, shrink shrink some coefficients, but also it will force them to be exactly equal to zero. So let's say you have 10,000 features and depending on what value you're going to pick for this penalty term you will end up, let's say, instead of 10,000, you will end up with 10, 15, 20. You know, that, that's, uh, that's something that you can adjust, right? So we, we use lasso, reg lasso regression for the feature selection as well. And like the ridge regression model in lasso, selecting a good value of lambda is critical because remember, lambda is our hyperparameter, right? So this is our hyperparameter, sorry. This is our hyperparameter, and we're gonna optimize that hyperparameter by using cross-validation down the road. Okay, uh, like any other penalized regression models, uh, we need to standardize the features before uh, training the model. Why? Because remember, the penalty term here is something like the summation of absolute values of weights. And it is important for us to compare you know, these weights that we are adding are comparable to each other, right? It's gonna help uh, the algorithm a lot to find the, the uh, to be, f firstly, to be faster and smoother. Okay, now let me tell you a couple of comments about Lasso. And so this is also a parametric model, right? Because we are imposing a functional form. And as you can see, this is a functional form that we're imposing to the f of x. This is our linear regression function, let's say. And on top of that, let's look at the loss function. So this is our loss function. So one of the caveats with lasso is that the loss function is not very well behaved, right? We are going to have a bunch of edges in the loss function. So maybe we, we end up with corner solution, okay? 
And so because the loss function is well behaved, we cannot uh, simply use, there is no closed form solution for this optimization problem. And we have to use gradient descent and its family to find the optimal parameters for Ws. Okay, so that this is one of the caveats of Lasso compared to ridge regression. Okay. We, uh, in the next video, I'm going to compare the, the what are the advantages and disadvantages of all, of all these models in very detail. But for now, let's continue. Okay, now let's take a look at our uh, example that we covered in the previous uh, episode as well, where the true relationship was observed, right? So this is a hypothetical example. Imagine you know what is the true relationship in the data, right? True relationship be uh, between X and Y. And as I said earlier, this is not observable in real world. However, let's say we know that, right? So this is our W1, W2, and W3, okay? And now we're gonna use the lasso regression to figure out if we can get close to these Ws, the true parameters in the model or not, right? So let's impose a functional form as the previous time. So we're imposing this polynomial degree to the power of five. I can add a noise as well here, okay? Because these are the estimated numbers. And, uh, and let's see at the end of the day, if Lasso is able to force W4 and W5 to be exactly equal to zero and then figure out some numbers for W1, two, and three. So this should be negative, these are positive, right? Okay, so let's plot Lasso regression coefficients versus alpha. So this is exactly the same exercise that we did for ridge regression. So here again, this is Python. And this is our lambda. In Python, we call it alpha. And for those of you who are curious to look at the code um, yourself, make sure that you watch my the machine learning applic machine learning course and its application in finance on YouTube, right? So there you can find all the slides and the Jupyter notebooks on my GitHub account. Okay, so what do we have? Here, the blue one is our W1, the orange one, W2, the red one, W3, sorry, the red one is W4, and we have green one, which is W3, and the purple one is W5. All right, now, the same exercise. If lambda is small, if lambda is equal to zero, these are going to be our initial uh, coefficients out of the linear regression model, right? Because there is no penalty term. If there is no penalty term, we get back our simple weights when we use linear regression model. If the lambda is super large, so let's say if lambda is large, then the model is going to penalize everything and all the features in the model and it will end up with all the weights to be equal to zero. So what is a good combination? Uh, you know, Python has some built-in functions for doing cross-validation and calculating the optimal level of lambda. And let's say, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's somewhere around here. Maybe lambda is somewhere around here. So this is lambda optimal. In that case, so in lambda optimal, what is W4? Do you see a red color here? No, so it's zero. What is W5? Do you see a purple one here? No, it's zero. And this is our W3, which is a negative number. And these are our W2 and W1. So this is W2, W1. So it seems that Lasso is doing a better job compared to ridge regression because it is specifically forced W4 and W5 to be equal to zero. And we know that in real, in the true relationship in the data, W4 and W5 were equal to zero. All right. Now let's. Uh, let's uh, look at the visualization of uh, sorry, the ridge and lasso versus lambda. So this is the case both for ridge regression and lasso. As lambda increase, when we go from left to right, as lambda increase, the model becomes less complex or simpler. And the, true, the green dots are the true observations. And these are, let me actually, I can use maybe two colors. Let's say this is the green, the, the blue one is for lasso. I'm going to use red for ridge, right? So if if lambda is a small, if lambda is a small, both LSO and ridge are going to uh, you know, come up with a more, let's say, very flexible model like this, and maybe they overlap, right? Because we are not uh, penalizing anything, 
Okay. The reason that I say maybe they overlap because in the next video, I'm going to talk about the differences. The path to the optimal weight is, is kind of different for rich versus less. So, okay. Then here, if lambda is large, For lasso, we know that all the coefficients are going to be exactly equal to zero, right? Exactly equal to zero for lasso. But for ridge, again, if lambda is super large, yes, they are going to be close to zero, but not exactly equal to zero. So may, maybe there is there is a little uh, slope here and there. Maybe there is a little curvature here and there, but it really doesn't matter. You know, eventually it's going to be exactly well. Eventually the, the coefficients are very close to zero, right? And then in between here we have lambda is let's say optimal. By optimal we mean that we get the best combination of bias versus variance trade-off, right? And let's say for both of them, I think it's something like that. May, maybe again for for rich there is a little curvature remaining in the model. So this is for rich because all, not all the coefficients are exactly equal to zero, but for less so, we're going to have, let's say the model will end, will end up with something like this, less so. Okay, so here, so let me give you a functional form. Maybe we're doing something like this. Uh, B plus W1X plus W2X squared plus W3X, oh, sorry, W3X cubed, and etc. So here in this example, both W2 and W3 are equal to zero. Uh, yeah, zero. And W1 is not equal to zero. This is for lasso. However, for ridge, we're going to end up with a very small, maybe tiny number for W2 and W3. So that's why there's going to be a little bit of curvature left. A little bit of curvature. Maybe, maybe we cannot even see it with eyes. Okay. And now here's a question of the day for ridge versus lasso. So I want you to pay attention and maybe pause the video for a second and think about it that if this, let's say, A versus B, tell me which one is less so using less so, which one is using ridge regression by looking at the path of the coefficients. Right. So the one A on the left, look at that. The path of the coefficient, the path of weights is very smooth and they're converging to zero. So this is ridge. The path is on a smooth. We're going to talk about this on a smooth path later on. And maybe sometimes it even, uh, look at that, the weights increase, negative number, and then go up again, right? So some of them are exactly set to equal to zero in between. So this is our last. So, all right. Now, finally, let's see what is behind the scene when you're using lasso regression, okay? Uh, so we had, this, uh, we had this argument in the previous episode as well, that why lasso is able to exactly set some of the coefficients equal to zero, right? So let's write the minimization problem. We are minimizing the loss functions, and loss function is a combination of MSE plus some penalty term, right? And this can be MSE or RSS, if you see in this example, this is RSS, residual sum of square. So this is y minus y hat to the power of 2. So basically, this is RSS. But that's basically the same idea. You know, if you minimize the RSS, it's as if you're minimizing the MSC, right? It doesn't make any changes to what are the optimal values. Okay. So here is a dual version of that convex optimization problem. We're going to say that minimize the convex function over this convex set, right? And uh, so here in machine learning terminology, we use weights. So we have the uh, weights less than or equal to S. And this is our, let's say, RSS. So again, uh, the same discussion as we had, that we had before. So for now, let's ignore this one, the subject two part, and try to minimize this RSS. So we have, so for example, here is RSS1, RSS2. Each contour was going to, the, the points on each contour, the combination of beta 1, beta 2 on each contour is going to give you the same value for RSS, right? And without any restrictions, we know that there is a global solution for beta hat 1, beta hat 2, right? So this is your beta hat 1, beta hat 2. And here you get your minimum RSS. In the previous video, it's, I talked about minimum MSE. That's basically the same idea. Okay. Now let's add back this restriction. So how can I visualize this restriction if I have only two parameters? So 
square root of w1 plus square root of w2 is less than or equal to some number, right? So this is as if you're looking at, you know, x, y axis, y plus x is less than or equal to some number. So this is, how does it look? It's something like this, right? So the same story we have here, we have beta 1, beta 2, and etc. Okay, so now we're looking at the intersection between the two, right? So what is the intersection between this convex set and this minimization? So on the answer, and as you can see, it can happen that the intersection is exactly at some corners, right? So here, beta 1, which is our W1, is exactly equal to 0. And our beta 2, or our W2, is not equal to zero, right? So that's why Lasso can make sure that some of the coefficients are exactly equal to zero. Not only sending them, not only shrinking them, but also is going to make sure that they are exactly equal to zero. And for that reason, Lasso is going to be used for feature selection as well. So this is one of the advantages of Lasso versus Rich. But of course, there are some disadvantages that we're going to discuss in the next video.